All righty. So we are in, uh, I know there's a little problem and it's, it, and it's confusing, but we are in Nehemiah 5. Nehemiah 5. 5, 1 through 13, okay? I'm at the fifth verse. Although we are of the same flesh and blood as our fellow Jews, and though our children are as good as theirs, yet we have to subject our sons and daughters to slavery. Some of our daughters have already been enslaved, but we are powerless because our fields and our vineyards belong to others. This Nehemiah. I pondered them in my mind and then accused the nobles and officials. I told them, you are charging your own people interest. So I called together a large meeting to deal with this and said, as far as possible, we have brought back our fellow Jews who were sold to the Gentiles. Now you are selling your own people only for them to be sold back to us. They were selling their own people into slavery to get money. They kept quiet, right, because they could find nothing to say. So, so Nehemiah knew he had I and my brothers and my men are also lending people money and grain, but let us stop charging interest. Nehemiah said, I'm helping the people too. I'm lending them money and grain too, but I'm not trying to make money off of them. Okay. I'm not charging them interest. Are y'all with me? Yes. Yeah. Ninth verse. So I continue what you are doing is not right. Shouldn't you walk in the fear of our God to avoid the reproach of our Gentile enemies? I and my brothers and my men are also lending the people money and grain, but let us stop charging interest. Give back to them immediately their fields, vineyards, olive groves, and houses, and also the interest you are charging them. One percent of the money, grain, new wine, and olive oil. We will give it back, they said. We will not demand anything more from them. We will do as you say. Then I summoned the priests. Now, wait a minute. Nehemiah heard what they said, but he said, dog, we got we, we to go a little bit further than this. Because y'all messed up uh, already at first. So he said, he said, I'm going to go get the priest and make y'all swear an oath. Are y'all with me? Yeah. That you're going to do right. Uh -huh. yeah. Then I summoned the priest and made my nobles and officials take an oath to do what they promised. I also shook out the folds of my robe. I'll tell you what that means. In this way, may God shake out of their house and possessions anyone who does not keep this promise. So may such a person be shaken out and empty. At this the whole assembly said amen and praised the Lord and the people did as they promised. Amen? Now, if your Sunday school book says Nehemiah 4, think back. Okay, put the thinking caps on. <laughs> what was last week's lesson about? What chapter was it from? Nehemiah 4. That's what we did. Remember Sambalot and Sambalot and all them? That was chapter 4. So we can't be in chapter 4 twice, right? We can't be in chapter 4 last week and this week, right? So this is chapter 5. I'm using that to remind you all that even though your book may say 4, it couldn't be 4 because we did 4 last week. Make sense? All right. So the word Nehemiah means... Comfort. Yes, ma'am. In our book, uh -huh. he, uh, started on page 107. Okay. And where he just read from finishes 108. Okay. So, so, so go to page 107, 108 in your book. That's where we are now. Thank you, Mother. Does everybody have a handout? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I'm glad you all told me that because I did not know. Because I don't have the same book as you all do. I have a teacher's version for obvious reasons. Amen. And the teacher's version today is supposed to be near my five. Okay. I'm going to. Can I give y'all some some history on Nehemiah and Ezra? I'm gonna do it anyway. I'm gonna say, yeah, please. Please. Amen. I mentioned this before, but in case you weren't here, the book of Nehemiah and the book of Ezra originally were one book. Yeah. The book of Nehemiah and the book of Ezra originally were one book. Kind of like Ezra slash Nehemiah. All right? Because Ezra built the temple and Nehemiah built the walls. All right? All right. In the book of Ezra, there's a gap in time of about 60 years between chapters 6 and 7, during which time Esther reigned with Xerxes. You might say Esther. Esther. You're going to see how all these books intertwine when you when you have an understanding of the time. 
Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. So what's going on in Ezra bleeds into Esther reigning with Xerxes the first. Okay? World rule was transferred to Babylon from Babylon to Persia in 539 BC and Jewish restoration to their homeland began. Began to come back home. Judah was still in bondage and that bondage passed to Persia. So the Babylonians passed the Jews over to the Persians. Okay, y'all learning something? Yeah. Now get this. Ezra 1, 1 and 2. Cyrus, get this, I love this, king of Persia at the time freed Judah to the work of God. God spoke to Cyrus the king. Cyrus freed the Jews. Are y'all learning something? Yeah. Cyrus freed the, the Jews. Now, anybody that doesn't want to believe in God, jot this down. <laughs> Jesus talked about Cyrus in the book of Isaiah 150 years before Cyrus was born. Wow. Jesus talked about Cyrus the king in the book of Isaiah 150 years before Cyrus was born. You can, you can find, about, find out about that in Isaiah 45. You can read about Cyrus. So why are they talking about Cyrus and Cyrus ain't, has, hasn't been born yet? That shows you that the Bible is the inspired word of God. Are y'all learning something? Yeah. How, well, how do you talk about something that ain't happened? Unless it's God telling you. Okay? God declares the end from the beginning. I mentioned Nehemiah's name means God comforts. Nehemiah obtained permission from our check from, from, from our exercises, the king to go to Jerusalem, as you know, to, to rebuild the wall. In Nehemiah 8, they're standing up reading the word of God. I love it. Preaching. Reading the word of God. Good God Almighty. And the people just stood up all those hours and listened to the word. Woo! The people didn't complain. They just stood up. And that's the way the word of God should, should always be. We, we ought to always stand up. We ought to always stand up and give reverence to the word of God. Ezra, now get this. When Ezra, in the eighth chapter, near my eighth, Ezra was up sharing the word of God. He was standing in front of the water gate. Somebody say the water gate. Water gate. The water gate around the wall. Now isn't it interesting? He's preaching at the water gate because water represents the word. What? The Bible says he sanctified and cleansed his church with the washing with water of the word and the Holy Ghost too. But, but it also uh, represents the word of God. As the Bible says he sanctified and cleansed his church with the washing with water of the word. So water, so water can also represent the word. Now, Zerubbabel and Joshua led the first return to Jerusalem in Ezra 1 and 6. Just a little background. To rebuild the temple. The book of Ezra talks about the second return by Ezra in Ezra 7 through 10. In 458 BC, Nehemiah talks about the third return to Jerusalem to, Jerusalem, to rebuild the wall in 445 BC in the book of Nehemiah. The, the book of Nehemiah was not just about rebuilding the wall. The wall was rebuilt in just 52 days. Okay? But we see what's going on about the, the richer Jews taking advantage of their brethren, etc., etc. So just uh, giving a little bit of background. Nehemiah 5, 1 through 5. So let's everybody go to Nehemiah 5, 1 through 5. The poorer Jews were being taken advantage of by their richer, excuse me, it should be by their richer Jewish brother. Okay? Now the men were working on the wall now, right? They're working on the wall, and they really can't go to their jobs like they normally would. So their families are beginning to suffer from the, from the lack of finances. Make sense? Some of them probably wanted to leave the wall and go back to work <laughs> so they could have the money. 
Yes, there was a famine. Yes, I'm, I'm getting ready to get to that. That, that. there was a famine going on that 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 made bad matters worse. There was a famine going on, so they weren't getting what they needed anyway. And then they also weren't working to get paid because they working on the wall. So you got like 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 the, the double whammy. You got the famine, and they're working on the wall, and they're really not working. You ever anything like that wrong with that? You ever anything that, that you'd like to say? Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> All right. So because they're working on the wall. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh -huh. I was going to say it's like doing volunteer work. Exactly. You know, you exactly. know uh, that this has to be done. And you know you're not. It's not something you're gonna get paid to do. Come on. But it's necessary. So they volunteer. They actually was doing volunteer. They they were doing that, building that wall up without getting paid. Exactly. Like the woman guy said, it it was. That's exactly what it was. It was volunteer work, and they weren't at their jobs where they should have been. Or would have been. Or, or would have been. <laughs> Amen. So. Uh, yes, ma'am. So what they what they start doing like. Have you tried to sell it all? Yeah. Sell that too. I, I read it. Yeah, I see you read it. Well, I, I, thank you. <laughs> well, I, I had some. Uh, my mom was reading it. And I just left my book in my body. Yeah, it's okay. It's but okay. I'm going to read it early. I'm going to be coming to do my little duty out there. Then I'm going to read it. Okay. That's fine. So just, That's fine. That's fine. I'm glad you read, Mother. My glasses. <laughs> oh, Lord. I'm glad you read, though, Mother. Yeah. I so, know. listen now. Yeah. We're doing Nehemiah 5, 1 through 5. Mm -hmm. Okay, everybody with me? Mm -hmm. Some needed grain to make food. Somebody mm -hmm. say grain to make food. Grain to make food. They could not make enough grain mm -hmm. and they didn't have the money to buy the grain. Because of the time, as one of the guys said, there was a family. Some were having trouble paying their mortgage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wanna know why? Because many had put up their homes as collateral to get grain during the famine. Mm -hmm. That was one reason. Yeah. That's one of the reasons. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they faced foreclosure mm -hmm. because the richer Jews were taking advantage of their poor Jewish brethren, taking their houses, as you're gonna see in a minute, lo loaning them money at real high interest. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. You know, I was thinking when I was reading it that, um, just like things going on now. Just like today, sure Just is. Like a lot of people, they live food stamps. They don't give them enough money to live in. Mm -hmm. So what they do, they go sell food stamps to try to get money for the wild detergent. And, they know, sure do. It's the same, you know. Exactly. Yeah. And not only is it the same way now. Mm -hmm. This is somebody says the greed of man. The, the greed, greed of, of man. man. That's the problem. Yeah. As we go on, you're going to see that the richer Jews were trying to get money from their very, very poor Jewish brethren. Yes. Let's go on. Let's go on. <laughs> Some also borrowed money to pay the Persian taxes. Yeah. So you got the Persian taxes going. Mm -hmm. You got people trying to get grain and putting up their houses for collateral and then getting their houses foreclosed upon. Mm -hmm. They need the grain to make food, didn't have enough, uh, didn't have money to buy the grain or the or, or make it, so they so they mortgage their home. Mm -hmm. Oh, nobody praying with me. Yes. Yes. So all these things are happening due to the famine, and partially due to the fact that people were working on the wall, mm -hmm. and they weren't going to work as they should have. Mm -hmm. Listen now, the more wealthy Jews that loan money charge forty to fifty percent interest. Wow. <laughs> Forty to fifty percent interest, and these are their Jewish brothers. Mm -hmm. It sure is. Not only is it called is it called predatory lending, man of God. It's called greed. It's called extortion. <laughs> I can testify to that personally because, as some of you may remember, we used to live in a house not too far from here, a five six ninth in California. One of the first cases that landed on um, Lisa Madigan's desk about that, where a company came in at the time we were behind on our mortgage, going to foreclosure, they promised to make certain repairs on the home, and they promised to assume the mortgage and uh, lower our interest rates, mm -hmm. have a lower 
to live. Oh, we did. We stayed there up to the very moment that the case was settled. Okay. But what we found out was the area that we live in is called Marshall Park. We found yep. out there was right up there. hundreds of people in that area that were going through the same thing. Oh, that's thing. horrible. And they didn't have a name for it at the time. I see. But years later, we're, you know, looking at TV and we start hearing about something called preparatory living. Wow. Okay. But we, but we see it right here in, in the MI5. Now, one of the sad things about all this is that these are their brothers. <laughs> of course. <laughs> and these and these Jewish people are thinking are not thinking about their brothers. They're only trying to make a buck. Somebody say a buck. A buck. <laughs> Isn't that, isn't that awesome? Somebody give me Le Leviticus 25, 36 and read it to us. Leviticus 25, 36. Of course you did. That's why you got scriptures in here. <laughs> Leviticus 25, 36. Whoever has it, please read it for us. Got it. Okay, read it for us. Leviticus 25 and verse 36 uh -huh. reads, Take thou no usury of him. No usury, that means interest. <laughs> Go on. Or be or increase. But fear thy God, that thy brother may live with thee. With Thank you. So it is in the scriptures. Right there. Proverbs talked about it too. Say, saying, don't charge your brother's interest. You're going to loan them, just loan them. Don't try and make money off people that are going through. Are y'all learning something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in the one of us right there, in, right there in the scripture. Mm -hmm. Well, he was talking about their own people. Exactly. People were talking about foreigners. Talking about their own people. Talking about their own people. And that's the sad part. And see, this is what, what made me and my man. He got a little hot under the collar. When they came to him and told him, because he was the governor at the time, they, they came to him and told him that the that they, that our Jewish brothers are extorting, taking our taking our property, foreclosing on us, etc. Right. Nehemiah five six through eleven. But also in this uh, section. He talks about their children going into slavery. Yes, yes, we're getting ready to get there. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. The children and some of the older Jews sold themselves into slavery, mm. trying to get the money to pay their mortgage, to buy grain, and to live. Are oh, y'all learning something? Yeah. Now. I call this an inside job. Somebody say an inside job. Inside, inside job. job. Because well, because up until this point, you're looking at Sambalot and Tobiah and all of them, and they're trying to um, force Nehemiah and his people and make them nervous and make them stop building the wall. So that's what those first four chapters are about. You know, and then Nehemiah goes out by night and. He, and spies out the land to see how everything looks and all that. But in the fifth chapter, somebody say in the fifth chapter, in the fifth chapter. Yeah. Yeah. of Nehemiah, we have a new problem. You may hear me preach this at some point. Turn to your neighbor again and say an inside job. Inside job. So, what the, so first the devil <laughs> raised up Tobiah and Sambalot and all them to come against the Jews and try and keep them from building the wall. Come on now. But then the devil decided, I think I can work better from the inside. 
Well, the outside didn't work. You know, you have to change your You got to uh, change your game. tactics. So what do you mean, Elder Cole? I'm glad you asked that question. What happened was this. So now the devil began to move on the greed of the richer Jews and have them actually taking apart their Jewish brothers, foreclosing on their houses, making themselves, go, making them go into slavery. Some sold themselves into slavery, as one of the guys said, right here on your in your notes. Some sold themselves into slavery again because of the financial duress that they're under. Okay. Oh Jesus. So word got back to Nehemiah, and Nehemiah got mad. So now we're going to do Nehemiah 5, 6 through 11. And we just read the scripture, as Jason read so articulately, from the book of Leviticus, that it was against Jewish law for you to charge interest. So Nehemiah was mad. Somebody say Nehemiah was, was mad. Nehemiah was mad. So, so now notice what the enemy did. He moved on the flesh of the richer Jews to, for them to, so God played on their greed to have them take advantage of their brother. Exactly. But, <laughs> but a man is walking, you shouldn't be thinking opportunity when your brothers are starving and, and getting foreclosed on. You don't. That's when you put a foot on him and you die. That's right. You don't try to make money off of a horrible situation. Come on, Joe. Y'all, for those of you that have cable, if y'all ever get a chance, there's a show that comes on CNBC once in a while called American Greed. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I will look at that, wasn't aware. So now, they went to Nehemiah. Amen. Nehemiah was very angry about this. And you want to know, Nehemiah was angry for two reasons. Number one, brothers trying to use brothers and take advantage. So he's mad about that. He's angry. He's like, okay, now we, now the Persians messing with us, the Jewish nation, period. And now you're going to mess up even worse by causing more trouble internally. Okay? They go through with Persia as it is. But now, the devil's moved on these people to have them foreclosing and, and all this horrible stuff, trying to make money and charging 50% interest. Somebody say payday loan. I'm sorry. Payday loan. 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 Never do it. <laughs> so, so that was a payday loan early, early, so, and that's the same way that the payday loans do it from, from, from what I understand, they charge you 50% or maybe more 100% or whatever. So they're doing the same thing, but, but this first thing actually is not new. The Bible says there's nothing new under the sun, right? Hallelujah. So we see this greed spirit way back here in Nehemiah. So Nehemiah's angry. He's angry because the Persia's been messing with him. And now he's got more problems from the inside. Oh, come up, hold on. He's got more problems from the inside than he's got from the Persians on the outside. Are y'all with me? Yeah. So Nehemiah got mad, he was angry, because the Jews were trying to make a profit from their own people. Mm -hmm. Okay? So Nehemiah talk, you know what? I'm gonna read this because it's kind of it's kind of funny. And the reaction of the people. We're gonna go to Nehemiah. <coughs> We're near my eight. Oh wait, excuse me. Near my five, excuse me, I got ahead of myself. Near my five, and we're gonna read. 
Five, six through five, eleven. Now, now this man might read it. When I heard their outcry and these charges, I was very angry. This man might. I pondered them in my mind and then accused the nobles and the officials. Leadership. Most of the people that were wealthy and had the money to lend were officials and nobles. Leadership. The, stop it. <laughs> the enemy will get into leaders mm -hmm. and make the leaders not do right by the people. Are y'all learning something? Yeah, yeah, Trump. Oh, somebody said Trump. I'm saying, um, <laughs> then Nehemiah goes on to say, you are charging your own people interests. Oh so Lord. I called a large meeting to deal with them. Okay, okay. so Nehemiah call in the rich Jews. Isn't this wonderful? Jesus Christ. He calls in the rich Jews. Now, you gotta also think, now Nehemiah is the governor. He's probably a little nervous to even do this. You wanna know why? Because these are the movers and the shakers. Well, if you're angry, you ain't gonna it be isn't. nervous. <laughs> they don't go together. <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 they don't go together. Oh. If you're angry, you are not nervous. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Advantage, you act like you've had a little bit of first hand experience with that. You go for it on them. Oh, I'm the queen of that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. I know all about me. I wasn't going to say that. All right. Okay. Well, I know. All right. Oh, truth is a lie. It is. He says, You're charging the people interest. So I charge, I call a large meeting to deal with them. Woo. Jesus. These are the rich my people. My Lord, my Lord. Mm -hmm. As far as possible, we have brought back our fellow Jews who were sold to the Gentiles. So, so the Jews have been sold, sold into slavery to the Persians before now, okay? So Nehemiah, being the great person that he is, worked with the other Jews to buy their Jewish brethren back out of slavery from Persia. Mm -hmm. Well, when they came back, um, they, they came back the, the people that stayed in Babylon helped finance them to come back. Yes. And Nehemiah was one of the people that had stayed. Exactly. So now, things look a little bit better. You're able to buy your brothers back out of slavery. And now the Jews, well, the rich Jews, put them back in slavery. And put, some of them put themselves into slavery, trying to pay, trying to get money to pay, keep from being foreclosed on. Are y'all with me? Yeah. So what Nehemiah is saying here is this is kind of productive. We just bought our brothers back out of slavery from Persia, and you put them back in slavery. Are y'all learning something? Yeah. All right. Greed will do that to you. <laughs> Greed is lust. And Apostle Turner has taught us in the scriptures, lust is never satisfied. Please receive uh, this coming. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for today. We thank you that you love a cheerful giver, oh God. So we want to give to this house with a cheerful heart, Father. We thank you for finances that you bless this week that we can't give. We honor you and give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Who do you think that, that they'll be? Uh-huh. And it's very good because you have studied and know how Ezra, Nehemiah, Malachi, Habakkuk, all of them all bleed over into each other. Sure was. <laughs> Excellent. So now, let me go back and read it. So Nehemiah is angry now because 
We spend money to get our brothers out of slavery and you put them back in slavery. Okay. Because now we are selling your own people only for them to be sold back to us. <laughs> Jesus. Oh God. Jesus. So Jesus, now Jesus, Jesus. these are the nobles and the rich people. Are y'all learning something? Yeah. He's chastising them. He's telling them what you did is wrong. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Shame, shame. We know your name kind of thing. <laughs> but then, well, how did the people react? What did the nobles say? They kept quiet because they could find nothing to say. Have you ever noticed that when you catch somebody in something, they'll either lie. What, what, what's the matter? They'll either lie or won't say nothing. Amen. And so, and the reason why they had nothing to say is because they knew that they were wrong. So I say they were wrong. They knew they were wrong, so they couldn't say anything. Exactly. Are y'all learning? Yes. Hallelujah. So I continue this day my nine, five and nine. What a, what you're doing is not right. He's getting down now. Shouldn't you walk in the fear of our God to avoid the reproach of our Gentile enemies? Oh. Oh. Amen. So like I said, he's he doing it. He's he's getting he's getting getting after them now because of what of the bad deeds that they're doing i and my brothers and my men are also living the people money and grain but let us stop charging interest now now nehemiah had some money he was the governor he was the king's cupbearer amen so he was doing all right financially a little something something like 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 the man of god said but Nehemiah was more concerned about his people than he was about himself. Hence the taking on the whole work to build the wall, amen? Which is why he's angry now. So, he says, shouldn't you walk in the fear of our God to avoid the reproach of our Gentile enemies? I and my brothers and my men are also lending the people money and grain. But let us stop charging interest. So Nehemiah was lending the people money too to help them, but he wasn't charging them usually or interest. He wasn't trying to make money off of his people. Now get this. Give back to them immediately their fields, their vineyards, olive groves, and houses, and also the interest you are charging them. One percent of the money, grain, new wine, and olive oil. So he's so he's he's taking them back. And he said, stop it immediately. He said, give the people back their houses that you foreclosed on. Come on. Come on. Foreclosing on their brothers. Are y'all getting this? Foreclosing on their brethren. He says, give them back all the interest that, that you took. <laughs> Come on. He said, give them back all the interest that you took from them. Somebody give me Ecclesiastes 5, 4 through 6. Ecclesiastes 5, 4 through 6. Somebody get that for me. Okay. It says, when you make a vow to God, do not delay to pay it. For he has no pleasure in fools. Pay what you have vowed. Better not to vow than to vow and not pay. Verse 6. Do not let your mouth cause your flesh to sin. Nor say before the messenger of God that it was an error. Why should you... Why should God be angry at your excuse and destroy the work of your hand? Not God. So now, we're saying there, and this is where I want to show you where we're going. Nehemiah then went into the folds of his robe and shook them out. Okay? Listen, the folds of the robe were used to carry possession, sometimes money, in the folds of the robe. Okay? So the picture of you shaking out your robe is that the possessions in the robe would be lost when you shake it out. Amen? So the picture here is that anything in the folds of the robe that you shake out would be lost. So when Nehemiah shakes out the folds of his robe, he's pointing out, you all are going to lose everything. So shaking out the folds of my robe, kind of like kicking, you know, uh, 
checking out the dust on your feet kind of way. It's symbolic that if you, because they, as we're going to go on and we're going to see, Nehemiah made them swear an oath that they were going to do right. See, they said they were going to do right, but Nehemiah, let me read it to you. Let me read it to you. After what you did. Oh, let me something. I'm going to pay you back. Pay back those other cups. <laughs> so he said, give them back immediately everything that you took from them. Let's go to Nehemiah 5, 12 through 13. This is good. Now, this is what these no good lying, as Apostle used to, used to call them, buckwheat skeezers, Jews, <laughs> Jews that had all this money that had been extorting and charging citizens with interest. Oh, wow. These officials said, we will give it back. <laughs> we will not demand anything more from them. We will do as you say. Mm -hmm. Now, you know what, for some odd reason, I can't figure out why, but for some odd reason, Nehemiah didn't believe them. Obviously, I'm being facetious because they had done all this horrible stuff. He said, he said yeah, well, you say, say you're going to do it. He said, but I'm going to put it to the test. <laughs> So now he said, he's going to make them take an oath. Get this. Wait, I love this. Then I summoned the priests. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, no, wait. He went and got the preacher. And made them swear before the preacher. <laughs> this ain't just, oh, I'll do it. Turn around and then don't do it. He made them swear an oath. Before the preacher, the priest. I think this is funny. See, it, it probably looked like this. Oh, we will do what you say. We sorry. We sorry. And then, and then they might say, okay, wait a minute. Stay right there. He went, <laughs> he went and got the man to God. All right. yeah, exactly. Just like that. Marvel little crook. <laughs> kind of looking like he had a stroke or something. Uh, and so then he went. He went and got the got the man of God. You know why? Because the man of God was going to be the wit. Are y'all learning this? Yes. The man of God was going to be the witness to what they promised. It's almost like if people don't act right, the Bible says, take them to the church. Huh? And he said, and then they said, and if they don't take, listen to what the church said. He said, treat them as a heathen man or a public and put them out. Amen. So now you got the man of God. You got the man of God who's now listening to the oath. I love this. Nehemiah said, oh, oh no, you ain't going to get me again. Mm -mm. So let's see what happens next. Then I summoned the priest and made the nobles and officials take an oath to do what they promised. He made them swear. And the man of God just read. You know, when you make a vow, vow be not slack to pay it. Because God's watching. Amen? So now the preacher is involved. I love this part. The preacher is involved. They swore in front of the preacher. And so now you got the preacher, they swear in, and then all of a sudden Nehemiah does something very, very unusual. In the middle of this oath. He went down in his robe and shook out the folds of the robe. That must look pretty funny in the middle of the of the oath. What? You know, you swear, oh, I, I swear by the power of our Lord and blah, 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 I won't do this anymore. And all of a sudden, me and mine start doing like this. You know what that is? He's shaking out the folds of his robe. The reason why he's doing this, as I mentioned earlier, they, they used to carry possessions, sometimes money, in the folds of their robe. So the folds of their robe generally had important stuff in it. <laughs> sometimes money, possessions that were important. So when he shook out, so when he shook out the folds of his robe, what he's saying is that's what God's going to do to you because people keep important stuff, valuable stuff, in the folds of their robe. And I'm shaking out the robe. That's what God's going to do to you. Because he's going to take all of your possessions if you don't do what you said you were going to do. 
Amen. Amen. Isn't that interesting? Yes. Turn to David and say, shake out the folds of your robe. Shake out the folds of your robe. Isn't Sunday school wonderful? Don't you learn stuff? Yeah. Well, what's the matter? <laughs> what's the matter? It's Sunday school. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. The John, they could go to pay their loans with a long robe on and just walk up and go. <laughs> Turn around and walk away. <laughs> what? <laughs> Unless they in our Sunday school class, uh -huh. they would what? What? They would know what's going on. Uh -huh. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Now, as he's shaking out the folds of his robe, I still think this would have, this would have looked funny in the middle of the meeting yeah. <laughs> with all these rich Jews. Beards and stuff, come on, look at our hearty. And then he starts shaking out his rock. <laughs> he says, in this, in this way, may God shake out their house and possessions, anyone who does not keep this promise. Huh? So he said, just like I shook out the stuff in my robe, he said, God don't go to your house and shake out your stuff. Your house, your possessions, come on, your money, come on, somebody. Amen. And I don't know about you, but I would not want God coming to my house shaking my stuff. <laughs> what, what? I think, Sister Bless, I think God could probably shake up stuff better than anybody else we know. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Happy belated. Mm -hmm. So may, but he, now he's not through yet. So may a person be shaken out and empty. So he said, if you don't do what you said you're going to do, when God gets through shaking, turning you upside down and shaking you, you are going to be empty. Now keep in mind, he's talking to the rich people. Huh? They don't want to be empty. They don't want God shaking them out. So guess what? You know what? They're going to probably keep their promise. Because all this shaking and stuff. Yeah. And when I think about all this shaking and stuff, you know, you, all the songs shake around, let them all roll. What? A whole lot of shaking going on. I'm sorry. Bad, elder, bad. Uh-oh. Bad. Uh -oh. So he said he's going to shake out all their possessions. And what's funny to me was he wasn't going to, he wasn't going to just, just say, okay, we ain't going to do it no more. Okay, we saw it. He made them swear. And went and got to preach. I just think that's hilarious. <laughs> okay, so mm -hmm. after he's shaking out his robe and telling them that they gonna be everything gonna be shaken out and they're gonna be empty, the whole assembly said, Amen. These rascally Jews who have, for, have been foreclosing, putting usury in. 50% interest on the people, Jesus Christ. putting them in slavery, come Jesus. on somebody, amen. When, when they about got through, they said, amen, John, <laughs> please do. Come now, you rich. Come on now, come on now. Coming upon you. Mm -hmm. Your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth-eaten. Moth -eaten. Your gold and silver are corroded and corrosion will be a witness against you. Good you eat God. your flesh like fire. Woo. You have heaped up treasure in the last days. Indeed, the wages of the laborers who mold your fields, which you kept back by fraud, cry out. The cries of the reapers have reached the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth. Good God. You have lived on the earth in pleasure and luxury. You fattened your hearts for as in a day of slaughter. You have condemned and you have murdered the just. He does not resist you. Get him out of God of Isn't that, doesn't that verse just tell the whole thing about what's going on here? Mm -hmm. That was James what? Was that? Uh, five. 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 James five. This was his actual ceremony with the fish for a governor of any one of stature to disrobe was like this. Now, your robe was your symbol of authority. Right. 
And let me get another one to your attention. And let me And let me get another one for you, for you, preacher. Somebody said the prodigal son. When the prodigal left, John, what's wrong? When the prodigal left and spent his money on harness and stuff, came back home. What does that do? He put a robe on him. Authority back on. Come on. Put his authority back on. Amen. And then the Bible says that he put shoes on his feet. Did you not know? This is Sunday school wonderful. Did you not know that slaves couldn't wear shoes? No. Come on. So the reason why he put shoes back on him was to show him that you're not a slave, you're still my slave. Oh, God. Jason, stop it. Oh. Now, Jason, <laughs> we got to have a conversation. When I'm when I'm preaching, which is which is quite frequently here lately, you got to stop going, ah! Oh, he does. He does that at least once during every message. I can't help it. And you've been yelling quite a bit lately too, I'm woman. Sorry. Of God. I can't help it. I'm just teasing y'all. You are really encouraging me a lot. I appreciate you. Yes, mother. Huh? Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. What she said? She said that's his signature. Oh. Is the so, so they reached in the robe, and as we have gotten through teaching, the robe represents authority. Mm -hmm. But and but then when he shakes out his robe, oh, that's yeah. prophecy, if you will, of what God's going to do to them if they don't keep their oath. Mm -hmm. the, the book of Proverbs is replete. Please ask these two about the vow to vow and not keep it. They call you a fool <laughs> if, if you vow a vow and you don't keep it. And they go on to just talk about people and say, you know what? It would have been better for you not to vow. <laughs> That's true. Nobody had made you vow. Well, well, well in this case, they might make you vow. But, made you take that off. Right. So, so what he's saying there is you vowed when you didn't have to vow, and now you're in trouble because you're not going to do what you said, and now God's going to get you. Uh-oh. <laughs> Glad you got something? Okay, come on. I can tell. <laughs> so when you say the robe, but then the belt, that's what you Yeah. That's what God, like we make the promise to God. I like that. I like that. I like that. I like that. So, so what you got to understand that I want to really share is this fifth chapter is, is almost like um, um, a pause between the stuff that's happening around. One through four, you got oppression, you got Sambalot and, and Tobiah working against the Jews from the outside. Right? Tobiah said, oh, look at this feeble wall y'all trying to build. If a fox jump on it, it will fall down. <laughs> huh? that, that's kind of cold, actually. Uh, talking about then trying to do everything that, that they can to stop them. But the king gave them a, a letter with a seal on it, man of God, tell, telling them that I give permission for them to do all this stuff. Samuel, Samuel I was even angry at them. Turn with me to Nehemiah, to, uh, Nehemiah the sixth chapter. I want to show you something. Talking about inside and outside. <laughs> Give me a second. I'm in 
five, six, and one. When, when you get a second. Got it. <laughs> Sam Blatt and Tobias and them were really angry. So let's see what they're going to do next. Now it came to pass when Sam Blatt and Tobias and Geshem, the Arabian, somebody called them the, the three students. <laughs> the, the, and the rest of our enemies, so those weren't the only ones, heard that I had built the wall and there was no breach left so it was connected, though at that time I had not shut the doors upon the gate. So see, the enemy, when you're doing the right stuff for God, the enemy will know about it. Are y'all with me? The enemy will know about it and he will come against you. I've been teaching for years. One of the best ways for you to know whether you're doing the right thing is whether or not you get persecuted. Mm -hmm. I didn't get no amens on that. That's true. Ain't nobody said, teach me how to on that guy. <laughs> but one of the ways for you to know that you're doing the right stuff is persecution. Because the devil, in attack, because the devil don't like it. Let's go on the two. And some a lot and guess you, listen to this, this is going to make you laugh. Sit unto me saying, Come, talk to my mind now. Let us meet together in some one of the villages in the plain of Ono. Oh, no. Stop it, stop it. Y'all messed up my flow. She said, she said, they said, Come meet us in the valley of Ono. Oh, no. Let me finish reading. Okay. But they thought to do me mischief. They were going to get him in there and kill him. So, Nehemiah said, oh no, <laughs> to oh no. <laughs> what, what, what? <laughs> huh? You know, and I think it's very funny that they said, come to the valley of Ono. <laughs> he said, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> nope. I know what you're up to. So now, when you get to the sixth chapter of the book of Nehemiah, they are really coming in this. They were going to get him in there and kill him. That's what they were going to do. My Lord, my Lord. But, but isn't the Holy Ghost wonderful? The Holy Ghost warned Nehemiah. He said, don't go. And so he said, oh no, to oh no. But see, that's what the Holy Ghost will do. The Holy Ghost will speak to you, and he'll tell you where to go and what to do. Have you ever been in your car, and you're going somewhere? And the Holy Ghost say, no, turn here. Um, I had the Holy Ghost yeah. drive my car and take me someplace where I really wasn't intending to go. That's because we are bought with a price. We are bought by the blood and the Holy Ghost warns us. Come on. There was a time I was getting ready to get on this expressway. Going somewhere. Oh, whatever. Oh no. <laughs> so I said, okay, so I'll suck up this expressway. I'm listening to the radio. Three minutes later, there was a huge, I think it was an eight car accident right around where I was getting ready to get on the But the guy spoke to me and told me not to do it. That's one of the beautiful things about not only being obedient, but also of being a child of, of the king. Because he will talk to you and tell you what to do and what not to do. Thank you. As you mentioned earlier, this future catamaran reward says a wise man sees the danger and hides and himself. himself. But the simple pass on in our time. And sometimes our flesh will get in the way so badly that we'll see stuff and we'll know we're not supposed to do it. Oh, ain't nobody saying teach other COVID yeah. now. We don't know we ain't supposed to do it, but we do it. <laughs> Ah. <laughs> Why don't you define that for us, child? The person that sees clear evidence of God's hand at work and ignores it anyway. I love it. And you could also say, what's insanity? Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. What's the definition of a fool? <laughs> That's pretty good. I'm gonna I'm gonna use that one. Come, come on, come on now. Oh God. <laughs> So what we have to understand is that chapter 5 of Nehemiah is a deviation from all the other stuff that's going on. All, the, all around it is outside persecution. 
And you may hear me preach this later one day. Because I call this an inside job. The devil loves to work an inside job. He loves to get your family. Ain't nobody saying teach me on the phone. He loves to have he loves to make your family come against you when you're trying to do the right thing. Huh? Oh my Lord. Huh? Jesus. Come on now, he sure did. He sure, and, it's, and it's the truth. I've been here for so long, I'm embarrassed to tell you. I've been here for 33 years. And I have seen so much betrayal. Jesus. Wow. <laughs> exactly. But the thing that you have to remember is that God is in control yes. the whole time. Yes. I've read the back of the book and we win. Let, right. let me say that. That's right. I said I've read the back of the book <laughs> and we win. Yeah. Yeah. Man. I Lord. think I'm gonna say that one more time. All I said right. I read the back of the book. One more time for the Holy Ghost. For the Holy Ghost. <laughs> hey. Hey. But, but we, we win, win the, the war. Yes. Yes. I read the back of the book and we win. Yeah. Yes. Hallelujah. And God said, be of good cheer. The word of God, it is written. Jesus said, be of good cheer because he's overcome the world. I will overcome the world. And that means everything. That's what it says. Everybody. Man of God. Me and you. That's true. Like she know the Bible. Oh. And me, I'm saved, but I'm completely saved. <laughs> so, I love your honesty. I don't know. But <laughs> that's what they call yeah. weak. Weak is not weak. And right. humble is having strength. All right? But being under obedience yes. to your master. Yes. Can I teach meekness? Come on. I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Why y'all be laughing at me like that? They, they be, gentlemen, they be laughing at me and stuff, boy, I tell you. Um, because you ask me to answer your own question. I know. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? Yes. See, so you do that to make people laugh. Uh -huh. Get them involved. You do that because you're deaf. <laughs> <laughs> so, the word meek means power under constraint. This it is a, don't mean weak. No, not at all. It means power under constraint. The Greek word for meek is a word used for domesticating horses. Oh, this is true. Ah. What? I said the word meek in the Greek, that word meek in Greek, in the Greek, is a word that's used for domesticating horses. A horse has a lot of power. But once the horse is domesticated, you put the bit in his mouth. Oh, I feel my teacher. You put the bit in his mouth and you pull it back and the horse stops. Now the horse will hold up on you. He's a lot bigger and stronger than you. But the, the horse's power is put under constraint because you taught the horse how to be meek and you trained him. Amen. Russ taught me something I was teaching Luke 4 about the uh, the storm and Jesus said peace be still in the Greek that means be muzzled so what God Jesus did he actually muzzled the storm mm. like you muzzle a dog now evangelist to be Russ over there taught me something about dog training. Some, somebody say dog training. Dog training. See, what they do is the dog begins to love and obey his, his, his master, the trainer. You got the muzzle. Nobody can put the muzzle on the dog but the master. Anybody else that tries to muzzle the dog gets bit. <laughs> Bad truth. Okay, so that kind of makes sense. But what Russ showed me that really blessed me, nobody can take the muzzle off the dog, but the master. But the, master. Right. But the one that put it on. It. Because if you try and take it off, you get bit again. All right. I remember when I preached this, I call it 
Jesus is the master of the story. Amen. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Yes. Just like only the master can put the muzzle on the dog, mm -hmm. only the master mm -hmm. can put the muzzle on the story. Man. Are y'all learning something? Man. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Going back to family betrayal, this scripture came out and said, in the last days, a man's Folks enemies will be they be out of his own household. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Come on now. Talking about talking about power of of the animals. Colos I, I preached this this morning as a matter of fact. Colossians 116 says all things are made by him. Visible or invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things are created by him and for him. He is before all things, and by him all things consist or are held together. Right. So all the animals, it says all things are made by him. Mm -hmm. So all the animals were, were made by him. And it says that everything that was made by him is by praise him Lord, and for him. Praise praise the, Lord, praise the, Lord, the animals have to answer Let's give yes, our God a holy hand clap. How many of you know that he's worthy? Amen. Yeah. How many know that he kept you this week? Yeah. How many know if it had not been for him on your side, where would you be? Come on. Yeah. Yes. We are grateful. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go now over. Can you please stand? Hallelujah. Please bow your heads with me. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Father, for being God. We thank you, Father God, for loving us so much that you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross that we may have eternal life. We thank you, Father God, that you have made it possible that we can live and have an abundant life, not only life, but life more abundantly. And we thank you for these benefits, dear God. Father God, we thank and praise you for your loving kindness, your tender mercies. We thank you that your mercies are made new every day, that you keep on, keep on, keep on forgiving us. And we're so grateful for that, Father God, as we strive and press toward the mark of the high calling. We thank you for the Holy Ghost that assists and helps us, Father God, to do better every day. Now, Father God, we ask you to stir up the Holy Ghost in us today, that we may be able to receive your teaching. Father God, that we may be able to receive our healing, our deliverance, and even for some of us, our salvation. Yes. We thank you, Father God. We expect a miracle today, Father God. And we expect in signs, wonders, wonders, and miracles to follow the word today. We know you're not going to let us down. So we give you praise in advance. In Jesus' name, let everybody say, Amen. 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 Your 